What's up everybody? Welcome back to another Blade X Lord video. Today we're going to be talking all about your daily to-dos, what you should be doing every day in the game, and I'm also going to share some tips and tricks uh, of some things that you don't want to miss because they can be kind of hard to figure out if you're not looking at all the guides, etc. And I'm going to answer the most asked question, which is what are the green stars on your weapons? Why are they there? So stay tuned for all of that. Okay, so the first one's pretty straightforward. Every single day you have to log in and get your rewards. Uh, you don't want to miss a day. For example, during this intro campaign, we got a guaranteed unit summon ticket, which was awesome for the seventh day. So if you're just starting out in the game, make sure you get to that seven day login ticket. Otherwise, you're going to be killing yourself for it. Uh, but once you've done that, then you have to move on to hunts. And if you're like me, you might not even have known that hunts existed until recently because they're not that obvious. It's, I honestly uh, was looking around the map. Uh, so we'll go, we'll go over to the other side uh, of the world here to where you start out because there's two hunts there so far for me. Uh, I was looking around the map because I was trying to complete all the side quests, which we'll talk about in a second here, and I noticed that the ground was shimmering. So it was happening right here where it says Spiked Peak of Anisha. Uh, the ground was sparkling, so I clicked it and it brought up this hunt. Okay, and when you click on your hunt, when you unlock these points all over the map, you can send characters on them and they say recommended level 25 or below, 35 or below, 55 or below, and you get rewards for doing them and they're really solid. Uh, you can level up all of your alternate characters this way fairly easily. It's, uh, it's just going to passively happen. Uh, it's really easy to re-embark as well, but you also get solid rewards for this. Like for, for example, the hunt, well, let's take a look what we got here. Okay, so we just got nine uh, weapon tickets, an energy potion, and we also got some Zell. That's pretty solid rewards for something that now I'm going to take a look and look at that, leveled up from 50 to 51, uh, and then Charles got a good uh, third or more of experience at level 54. Uh, so uh, this is the party that I'm recommending. It's six, uh, six hours. I'm going to press start, done. Right? So all throughout the day, you want to be clicking on these hunts because if you do that alone and there's going to be more to unlock, uh, just think about how many summon tickets you're going to be getting just from that. Plus, uh, when you want to use a character, they may be already leveled for you. So there's several hunts around the map that you can click on uh, in order to uh, unlock them to do daily. There's also on this map uh, some other things that I'm going to show you. And it, that you have to search really carefully for. For example, look at the, the Abyssal Shrine here. Now right below there, there is a little treasure chest and it's open. And if you look over at this island, there is another one and it's open. So when they're closed, you won't see the black there. It will just kind of look like a little brown chest. There's another one over here. Do not miss these. They're kind of hard to spot sometimes. It's again, there's one down here that I did not know existed until I saw someone post on Reddit and the rewards for some of them are crazy. I think I opened one and I got like 30 summon tickets. So uh, weapon summon tickets. So you don't want to sleep on those by any means uh, at all. So once you've done your hunts, once you've done your login rewards, all that, you want to probably just start working on some of the daily quests. Uh, so when you're in your main menu here and you go over to missions, which always takes a little bit to load, you're going to have your daily missions here. You don't want to skip these. Uh, for example, trade one time at the trading post and you will get five uh, training manuals that's pretty huge uh, and then make one purchase at the limited set shop uh, and you get five tickets this one's a little harder to do uh, and then creating accessories uh, upgrading accessories all that kind of stuff don't miss this stuff uh, especially these two if you can these are really solid so we'll talk more about the trading post and the limited set shop at the end of the video but for now we're going to move on so you're doing your daily quests uh, and then we're going to move on to story quests so Progressing the story is important right now uh, because of the rewards you get, because the rank up is going to uh, give you um, more stamina and 
progressing the story is also going to unlock a bunch of features including just all the ex the accessory recipes which is really solid so I would work on the story as much as possible and only stop if you're uh, at a, a wall and you can't beat a fight so you can see here I'm currently working through chapter 13 but another thing that you might notice is these two maps have numbers above them those are the available quests I have not done yet uh, and these are side quests and you want to do all of these side quests and the loop quests at least once because you're going to get all these mission completed rewards which are really solid for example this is Goldmand Ore, it's a rare material, and I can get 10 of them for just finishing this in two minutes. Uh, and then again, getting this grass is gonna be really solid. There's other ones too, getting two uh, training manuals, getting 20 hero stars. Uh, these are all really good rewards, and then of course, everything gives you Lord Stones as well. So. While you're working on your main story quests, try to do all the, the side quests as well. Uh, you can see that I've done all the side quests uh, and then I stopped right here to work on the main story a little bit more uh, before going back to these ones again. Uh, because they do also take stamina, so sometimes I'll use up all my stamina and then do the main story a bunch, unlock more side quests, and do stamina. You can also get accessory uh, recipes from doing side quests. I, I believe I did a, a side quest in the forest and I got all this the uh, attacker type or the weapon type uh, specialty accessories which is really nice as well so don't skip those. Uh, the next thing that you should try to do every single day is going to be your brave story quests and you just want to keep up on these because it gives you Lord Stones, they give you uh, all sorts of uh, rewards for doing them, uh, and when you do get to that 100 bond quest and you complete it, it will give you a ridiculous amount of rank up experience, like I'm talking a whole rank and more, uh, depending on what rank you are, so you definitely want to keep up on these. The reason that I am not doing these ones right now is because I'm not using these characters and I'd, I'm i actually going to, and this is, this is a preference for me, I'm going to save up a little bit so that their stories all happen at the same time. Uh, like I, like um, I can do all of uh, uh, their stories at once uh, so I can read them all in a row because I actually really enjoy the stories. But if you're not into the stories and you're just hitting skip, then do all of these as soon as they come up and get all the rewards. You don't have to do a battle until the 100 bond quest. Okay, at this point, if you've done everything else on my list, then you need to move on to your day of the week and your auto looping quests uh, to start farming. And if you want to know about what you should be farming and, and how you should be prioritizing it all, then go check out my formation and power building video. I talk all about that, but this is your next step. Once you've done everything else, just work on farming. Okay, so that's going to be it for the daily stuff that you want to do. We're going to talk now about some of the other little tips and tricks that you might find in the game. I already talked about searching the map for hunt locations and treasure chests, uh, but we're also going to talk about some of the other things like the stores. So if I go back to the home and I go to shop, there are some options here. So we're going to start with the trading post. The trading post has uh, a bunch of stuff available uh, and a lot of it costs Zell uh, and then various materials that you can farm. So this energy potion right here, it only costs one grass and no Zell, so you always grab that for sure. Uh, but then otherwise, you can very easily grab a lot of energy potions to stock up for your big auto looping sessions. So don't worry about spending. Again, this is the common theme in this game. Spend everything. Don't hold back. The game is designed to be farmed, uh, so you can buy all your energy potions here and uh, go out auto farming some more. You can also get specific items here which is very nice uh, and you can make gold steel and silver steel here if you have the materials for them uh, which so far I have not been able to get my hands on. This is pretty straightforward you want to do this once per day because you're gonna get that uh, uh, daily quest as well so that's really important. Then there's also the special trade 
Now the special trade store, you get these Stardust me uh, medals for pulling on a specific banner. Uh, and when that banner ends, this trade store ends. So if you've been pulling on the light banner and have a bunch of Stardust medals, you actually need to spend them on Sunday, April uh, 26th, which will be admittedly before this video comes out. So I'm sorry about that if you forgot to do it. Uh, maybe I'll make a post on Reddit or something. Uh, but this is going to end soon, so make sure you do that. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to spend on a guaranteed weapon or a guaranteed unit unless you're actually spending money on these banners. I don't think, even with all this uh, bonus Lord Stones we're getting right now for achievements and for presents, I still haven't been able... Uh, I still wasn't close to being able to get a character, let alone a weapon, so uh, I think these are more to reward people that spend money, uh, but you can save up for some interesting stuff like gold pellets, uh, which would you can use to evolve your weapons if you turn them into a, the actual ignorant, uh, and then other things like summon tickets, so I bought a bunch of summon tickets, uh, and then energy potions and silver summon tickets. So I'm probably not going to make another pull on this banner, so I'll go ahead uh, and I'll buy a couple tickets right now that should do me for my mission here so if we go back here look at that oh maybe that's limited set shop is a different thing never mind uh, so that's a whole nother thing okay uh, so then there's the uh, X metals okay and these are pretty awesome rewards. So you need 5,000 to get a guaranteed unit summon or guaranteed weapon summon, but you can get other materials here too. So this is a good way to get your ev evolution stuff uh, for uh, your SR weapons, as well as some awakening materials. Now, how do you get X metals? And this is gonna tie into that green star. So you're gonna do that by selling weapons, uh, which you can do from your upgrade menu. So if we go to view, list, and sell, and before we go to, to selling the weapons, we're gonna take a look at the items. You may have uh, these coins and they say for sale on them. That is the only purpose for them. You can sell these uh, for sure to get a bunch of Zell. Uh, and these are just rare drops from different stages. So let's do that. Let's sell. Boom. Okay, uh, awesome. So when you wanna sell a weapon, it is going to give you Zell and X medals. So you can see here, if I sell this rare staff, it's worth one X medal. So that's, that's not even worth it. Uh, if I sell this uh, SSR axe, it's worth one X metal. It's not worth it. But these green star ones are all worth more. So this green star staff is worth 300 X medals, and these green star rare items are worth 100 X medals. The green star represents that you spent blade diamonds or lord, lord stones on it, so it was a purchased summon in some capacity. Everything else is from the free pulls at the beginning of the game that you got, the free pulls that you get from tickets, from summoning tickets, from uh, the weapon tickets, silver and gold, and all of those types of things. So if it has a green star on it, it means that you purchased it with the uh, blade stones or the Lord stones and then they are worth more for a trade-in so you have to keep that in mind you don't want to use these green star items as uh, upgrade fodder unless you really need to because you might consider to start selling them uh, as you get them in order to eventually buy a nice guaranteed ticket or buy different mats that you need uh, so that's a whole other system that is pretty interesting and otherwise that green star means nothing it has no bearing on the stats it has no bearing on on the power or whatever of the weapon it's just to do with how you got the weapon and what it's going to be worth selling it for the x metals so other than that there isn't much else going on in the shop uh there's purchasing uh, weapon slots, accessory slots, purchasing diamonds, and then purchasing the packs. Uh, I believe that this might be the packs that they were talking about, the limited sets. Uh, and as I'm free to play, this is not something that's going to interest me right now, but you know, uh, if I get into the game enough, I might buy something at some point. 
Uh, but that's going to be it uh, for this video. So let me know if it was useful or if you still have questions about things. And, and then otherwise, uh, we'll see you next time. So thanks a lot for coming by. Thank you so much for watching this video. You can show your support with a like and subscribe. And by checking out my Patreon at patreon.com slash Gaming. Until next time, keep it real, Mesidians.